It's been a while, but uh, I'm glad to welcome you again to a Coding Freak screencast. Um, it's again about ASP.NET Identity, but now it's about ASP.NET Identity 2, which is um, not in beta uh, now, but it's released. And since it's released, uh, there are a few pro problems uh, in difference between beta and um, the real one. And now I want to show you some stuff on how to um, uh, take an existing model from database and um, how to uh, bring identity to work. I do it a little bit different than on my first screencast, which I will link on YouTube um, to this cast and uh, I'll show you step by step what to do. To show it, I just prepared a solution um, and I um, did it the following way. I just added a default ASP.NET MVC 5 template here so that we can compare it to the one I already created ready for um, ASP.NET Identity. Um, then I have a database model which you can see here. I have this database and uh, it has all the required tables. Um, I'll show you uh, what's required inside the tables later. And then I have a third project, which is this one. This is a um, class library. And I decided to put all the stuff uh, required for ASP.NET Identity into this um, a class library. So uh, I will provide this code uh, to all of you and you can rename those classes and do whatever you want. Okay, let's go step by step and take a look into the default um, ASP.NET MVC site. The main thing about identification, the starting point is uh, obviously the account controller. The account controller, I'll try not to forget to zoom, in the default uh, just uses the an instance of application user manager and application user manager is inserted via um, the constructor here. And this application user manager, if I hit F12 and just sync it, and you can see it's inside the app start folder in the default. It's um, a file called identity config. And this class is just uh, using um, an inserted injected iUser store, which is in fact our um, DB context to entity framework and which is handling all the stuff. But what's the problem all about this? Just to repeat it, this uh, default template requires a certain uh, schema on the database, which may be good for some people, but uh, other people like me, they were a little bit disturbed because uh, we have already a schema and now we want to switch to ASP.NET Identity 2 and we cannot do this without additional work on our schema, on our um, schema which is different from the schema this application user manager ex uh, expects. So now what's the difference in the schema? Let's switch over to uh, our database now um, and see what's different. I decided to use um, in the ID column, you see it here, it's an auto increment ID and I decided to use big end, which maps to the long data type in .NET. And uh, I did this long ago and I'm um, going on doing this because I want, uh, you know, uh, numeric IDs for all my instances to be generated by SQL Server. SQL Server. Okay, but that's not good for ASP.NET uh, identity because when I just set this as my startup project and I just go and start it once, <coughs> it comes up. Mm -hmm. Just a second. And now I can register. Magically, I just can say, hey, that's my mail address and uh, some kind of password. And now s some kind of magically, I will be regist registered to a database. The question is to which database? Mm -hmm. I hope
hope it works. Yeah, I'm now I'm registered and I stop it and the database is encoded in the web config and it's the default connection which points to a local DB. And now when we go to the um, um, uh, here the uh, server manager it should be yeah here it is and now you see it's generated those automatically um, uh, get generated tables and here for instance the uh, ASP.NET users the name is um, it's a decision by identity and it has an ID column and the ID column is Envarkar which is string which is not what I want it to be. Okay that's that's the problem. Now the solution. I just close this project and just take a look at this one set a startup project now, for, for instance, when we take a look at the app start folder, you can see, let's examine it. Mm. You can see here in my already um, overworked sample, you can see here is no identity config inside it. I just removed it. And instead of, I just generated here all the stuff I need for dealing with my um, with my classes, uh, with my structure in the DB. So, what's going on in the controller here, in the account controller? Let's take a look in my new account controller. The new account controller here, I have uh, the forgery token is the same, but I don't go to the default user manager, but instead of I go to a class or an instance which is named my user manager. You see, my user manager. And when I go to my user manager, you can see it in the library here. It's a user manager. It's inherited, in, inherited from user manager of type my user, another class I created. You can see it here. And the second parameter, let's zoom a little bit, is long, which is uh, something ASP.NET identity provides us in the base class user manager to say, hey, okay, um, I see you want to do you want to deal with another user, my user, and you want to deal with some other type of key. Um, and I say my key is long. So this is a base point to understand how to um, step into this customization of ASP.NET identity. Now when we take a look, we have to do this all the time here. We have to do, hey, it's an iUser store of my user and long, which is our database. We will see it uh, later. Um, then we have to say him, hey, on, on any point that he needs it, we have to say, hey, the manager is a new my user manager, which needs a new user store, which is defined this way. This is, we have to do this all the time. Let's um, examine this my user manager with the original user manager, which is um, inside of identity config. Here you can see this is the original one. And let's just do them side by side. Now you can see it. On the left side is my new one, on the right side is um, the one we had uh, in ASP.NET uh, 5. And you can see here, my user manager inherits from user manager my user long. And this one says just, hey, uh, my base class will be user manager of type application user, which is another class which is um, defined here. Uh, so there's a difference. And it takes string as a default uh, key parameter, key type, and so on. And here you can see if this says, uh, for example, new user validator of application user, which maps to this one, then we have to do the same stuff here. We have to say, no, 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 not application user. Please use user validator, which can deal with my user and a long, um, long as the key type, and so on. It's pretty straightforward when you just uh, got the point and you have to do it all the time. Um, okay, let's assume that this is okay. What's up with my user? We saw it, my user. 
you see here, I have some additional properties and some which, he, uh, which um, ASP.NET Identity 5 do doesn't need. Um, for, ex for instance, activation token. This is something that I need in my application, but ASP.NET Identity says, hey, I don't know what that is. So I just add this property here to the user, which is an identity user of ASP.NET Identity. I just add the property because I need it. And then at the end, and this is the first big difference to my first screencast, I just implemented here a method which, uh, which is needed by other stuff in the, in the final version, which is called generate user identity async. And this one um, is used, you see, I, I left it here to, to add claims to my uh, user identity, but this is a default implementation. I just zoom a little bit again to um, do this. The, the main thing is that this thing has to, um, has to be the same like in the um, off config. I think it's here. You see it, it has to map to this one. Um, in, in some kind of way, uh, and that's, uh, that's the, the only thing. But if you use this uh, implementation of me, it should work for a default MVC site. Okay, that's a big difference to the first uh, screencast. Uh, okay, now you can see the user depends, uh, has long again as his key property and needs a login, a user role, and a claim which again I defined here. For example, if I go to my claim, it's pretty simple. I just say, hey, it's an identity user claim, but it uses again long as the key. That's it. Okay, and for, for instance, my login, the same thing, but um, it's uh, inherited from identity user login. So what we are doing here is um, simply, we just inheriting from uh, classes from base classes provided by ASP.NET Identity and tell them not to use string as the key type. That's all. Okay, now um, another uh, complicated thing is the context, the application DB context. This one will be used by my project, by this project, but I put it in the library too so you can get it when you download all the stuff. The application DB context is an identity DB context of type my user, my role, long as the key, and so on. And here you can see in the constructor is defined that this application DB context says, hey, I expect the database connection string to be in the connection string of the calling web config under this key. So let's take a look at my web config and zoom. I know I forget this all the time. And you see I have two connection strings here, for example. This one will be used by identity. And when I just change this value, identity connection, then I have to do the same here. So that the link between this class and this setting Will be, will be done. Now, go to the methods, and this is kind of interesting, what's going on here. This is important. As you have saw, saw earlier, the default ASP.NET identity expect, expects this uh, table names. Now, when we just implement our own my user, my role, and so on, uh, identity wouldn't know how to map those classes classes to my table names, which are different from the default one, ones. And thus, we have to, first of all, we have to tell identity in on model creating of the DB context, hey, here is something different. In my database is, is something different. First of all, we are mapping identities to their tables. We say model builder, which is passed in this, into this override, model builder, take all my user entities and map them to the table user. Okay, let's check this and just open this one too. This is my table user and not ASP.NET user. And do this for all the other tables too. So, 
OK? And you see that, that are my classes. Now we just say, hey, 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 modular, that's not all. We have some special stuff here because, for instance, in our my user, the property ID is database generated. Because, again, I just pin it so you are not confused so often. User is a key, and this key, just open it, um, is an identity column. You can see it here on the bottom right, which means that SQL Server will deal the value of this thing. It's auto-incremented. And this is true for my user, my claim, and my role. Um, so to say for user, role, and user claim. Let's check it. Role has one, user claim has one, but user login has none because it's just an N2M mapping user login. It, doesn't, it does not need a uh, uh, thing like that, and user, user registration token is not part of all this stuff. Okay, and at the last point, and this is something which confuses people which are switching, and which uh, there, there were a lot of comments about um, uh, this stuff, we say, hey, here is the my user type, and the my user type has a property which is called username. But my table has a different structure. My table says this is stored in a, in a column which is named login. This is what we do here. We just tell them don't go, don't search for a column named username. Please instead use login. And the same for password hash. We say him use password. Beside this, we have to do something to make it work. For, for instance, those columns from here, these columns, which I marked, you have to add those columns to the table, uh, to your user table, no matter how it's named, but it has to have this uh, these columns. I just generated, and I will share this with you too, in script, because I recognize it's, it's kind of, you know, uh, hmm, confusing to uh, create all the right uh, constraints, all the right uh, data types in the columns. So I just generated a SQL script here, which you can see uh, just shows the default on creating exactly this structure, which is here. Um, if you have an existing model, you have to be careful logically, because you don't have to create a new table, but you have to alter your table and add the columns which are needed and which are missing at your, your time. Please don't use this one, for instance. This is just a sample, because I have an activation token. You don't have it in your model. Okay, remove it. I hope you <laughs> get what I'm saying, because kind of uh, uh, confusing. Okay. To just to complete all the stuff, um, uh, we have to uh, say our controller, just to, to wrap this up. At the last point, hey, use my user manager. My user manager, on the other hand, says, hey, I'm a user manager of mm, mm, mm and I have user store, blah, blah, blah. And this is mapped completely by this application DB context. This is, in fact, the application DB context, if you will. There are some other classes here on the top which are needed, for example, email service. They, they are coming with the new template of ASP.NET um, um, no, uh, ASP MVC5, excuse me. And I just put those classes here too, so that we can get rid of something which is in the default, let's see, in this identity model. Identity model in, oh, no, I'm wrong. Sorry for this. Let's uh, take a look. I'm all the time I'm confused about this too. Uh, they are here, you see. Microsoft does something which I'm very angry about, by the way, just a side story, because they are just building this stuff and they are putting classes into single files. And I don't like this. I don't like this at all, and by the way, it's um, considered not good 
uh, project design by Microsoft itself, they have uh, somewhere class design guidelines and somewhere inside there, there stands don't put multiple classes into one file. Um, which I like, but you see what I mean? So um, I just extracted those classes, email service and SMS servers, into single files here, so it's a little bit more, um, you know, ordered, better ordered. So this, this I wanted to state out, and now we have to prove that it works, <laughs> of course, and let's take a look at on our table at the moment. Let's go and hit show table data here mm -hmm. and wait <coughs> and as you can or you will see there's already a user I just I already created one so let's hit F5 on I uh, set up my identity sample as a startup earlier just you see here it's the new one and now just let's check if oh I'm <laughs> No, login, and let's go and say this is my email. What is going on? Mm -hmm. Let's try this out. Okay, I'm logged in. And now just um, uh, to, to show you, I don't know exactly, is last login stored here? No, I don't think so. It's not part of the default model. And now just create another user. That's a simple one. Register. Okay, let's say, I like this sample address. Mm. Let's give him a strange password. Let's see if, it, if it's okay for him. Yeah, it is. Fox Mulder is logged in on my site. That's cool. <coughs> and let's see if this one is in this database. So to prove, yeah, it's Fox Mulder with his password. And um, so you can see it's, an, it's a model which is isn't matching the identity model, um, but here, but um, I can still use it. And if you go and uh, for ends, for example, if you go to App Start Startup Alp, and you now will just uncomment, for instance, this one. Oh, the other way. So, and uh, say, okay. Uh, a client ID and the client secret, which you get from Microsoft to uh, do a single sign-on with Live ID, uh, just put in there those secrets which they gave you as a developer and the ID, and you are able to uh, use all of them. And that's the main reason to switch to ASP.NET identity. Um, and you can use out of the box, as you can see, there's Twitter, Facebook, Google, of, and uh, Live ID. And um, that's the reason why I decided I want to switch to this new cool stuff and to the new point, uh, but I don't want to lose my complete data model. So, uh, as I said, I will uh, put sample code, this sample solution I will put into a zip file and put it uh, and at some point on my blog. And uh, when you have questions, uh, just post comments as you did before. Thanks.